Hello, my name is Savio, and this is another OpenSwall video. Today, we will build a WebSocket client on the server side. Let's do it. Hello, in the last video, we built a pretty interesting service where we interacted with our WebSocket server and saw broadcast broadcasted messages to all connected clients. We also transferred information to clients that were serving the purpose of informing about newly opened or closed connections. There, we built our clients in JavaScript to run on the browser. What if we want to interact with the same server from the backend? For that, I will use a package called Socket uh, Conveyor Server Client. This package is necessary to facilitate crafting a client for WebSocket servers with support to Socket Conveyor, the package we use to route our messages. That will allow us to programmatically message clients, in other, in other words, to build bots. This might be useful for some things between them, them uh, analyze messages in real time and react to them, uh, if we want to add bots to interact with users or if we want services to connect with each other using WebSockets. In this example, we will build a client that will listen to events broadcasted in the channel and then when it matches an expected word, that bot will message back. The package, as said before, is Conveyor Server Client. Let's install it via Composer. We do like this. That's it. We have it installed. Now that we have the package installed, let's write the client. This example will be straightforward because I built this client to have the same interface as the client used in this video, uh, the client in JavaScript. It has the same interface. That means that the parameters will work the same. So let's take a look. First, here we are, renders directory. And then we are going to create our first file right here. So let's name it client of PHP. It's going to be first. First of all, we do the basic stuff, which is we load the outload of composer. Then we load the conveyor server client client class. There it is. It's the only package loaded, so the ID will easily find it. So now we will instantiate the client. And basically, after this instantiation, here we go the options. We go there and connect. There it is. In the options, uh, we'll have four parameters. The first of them is the port, so let's go there. Port. And because we are not using the default port that comes with the package, which is 8000, 8, uh, we're going to customize the port. So let's use 8585. And the second parameter is the on message callback. The on message callback is the function that will be executed for every incoming message. So is the is, is going to be the callback for every incoming message on this client. So let's go there, on message callback. There it is. And the callback as the, as the first parameter, the client, the WebSocket client instance, and as the second parameter, the incoming message, okay? And as the 
third parameter we will have the channel. We are going to connect to a channel so we can communicate with the other clients from the previous video. So let's go there and add channel. And the channel that we are using is the sample channel. And then list. And we are going, this is always an array because we can listen more than one action. Secondary broadcast action. So we are going to listen only to this action. If there is any other action there, we won't say anything. We won't do anything about it. And that's pretty much it. We are going to listen to these actions in this channel and then we are going to react to that. So let's elect something. Every time this condition here happens, let's put it true for now, our client is going to send a message uh, doing something about it. So let's say, let's send uh, at, uh, an action, right? And this is how we send an action on something. Send a JSON encoded array with two keys. First one, we're going to send for the same action so the other ones can receive it and do whatever they need to do, and then the data. So let's say uh, every every time someone says hello, this bot will say hello from the bot. Let's say hello. From the bot. Okay, so let's go back and let's because every message comes as a, a JSON encoded string, that is a JSON string, we're going to decode the message of an array in here. Let's keep it simple and just only the message that are only hello is hello world won't match. Just for the sake of simplicity. Hello. There is M for the purpose of debugging. Let's write on the console every time something, something comes here. There it is. And our client is Ray. So now that the client is ready, let's run in this case here in two windows of the browser, one incognito and one not, and see what happens. So first of all, this is the code that we built uh, in our previous video. Uh, let's run the server. So, and we are running the server, listening to the port P585. Let's connect our clients. Now we have two clients. We can say things to each other. They will listen. Now let's connect our bot to the same server. So let's go there and connect the bot. We can see the bot as ID6. And let's see if the bot it receives but doesn't respond yet. Let's see if the bot sends hello. Hello from the bot. It worked. There is just one observation here from our previous video. Uh, there is one mistake that we did that would result in this behavior right here. Right now we can message each other, but when we connect our client, this causes them or not to be able to communicate with them before anymore because of that client connected. This happens because if we go to our 
to our previous server, we customized the secondary broadcast action with these right here. And since then, there was an upgrade update on socket conveyor that fixed this issue. So let's, instead of using this action that is broken here, let's use the base broadcast action. So let's go there and on our resources, we say to send the broadcast action. Let's see if there is any other occurrence. There are none other than the, the, the determination of the callback. So every, every incoming message, we're going to simply broadcast. This is our update here. Uh, after this, we just have to recompile. Let's now change the client. Here on our client, this is the thing. We remove this from the action and we stop listening to that to start with the base broadcast action. So with this in hand, we should be ready to go. Let's go back to our terminals. Back to our browser. Uh, first, we build our assets, clear, and now we start. Let's see if they are working as expected first. Yep, uh, notice that we're not using fanout. Uh, we were using a strategy to fanout. Now we're just broadcasting, which means that the ones the client sending not going to receive its own message. On the fanout otherwise, if they will receive every message, including his own. And now let's connect the client and see if, if they're still working fine. And let's say, let's send a hello. Hello, there it is, worked fine. Now, for the sake of the test, let's test the fanout action. Fanout action, let's add a handler here. It's just going to be the same because we're just going to do whatever we were doing before. Here on our client, we're just going to do the same again. Let's add that we are fan out actions and we're going to listen to fan out. There it is. Uh, we're done. Back to our browsers. Let's see if. This works. Let's again compile the bundle action and for the server connect. Let's see if the message is working as expected. Now on the client. Let's see. Let's let's just set the same same ones. Now let's send hello. working as expected. 